Oh man, there's like, I can't even create space with this. Rachel and welcome to this week's episode of NBA 2K TV. So a couple weeks ago you guys got to see my face and body scan and now it's time to add some movement. I'm here at the 2K motion capture facility and I'm about to go suit up and get some shots in myself. Hi, Rachel. Welcome to 2K MoCap. Nice to officially meet you. Your suit's all ready, so once you suit up, I'll meet you at the bartering station. Cool. I'm excited. I headed straight into my dressing room to put on my high fashion and oh-so-flattering motion capture suit. Okay, let's be honest here. The thing is pretty itchy and made me look like an avatar, but it's all for the cause. You're all right with, like, all the Velcro, are you? Well, I guess I have to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> After suiting up, I headed to the marker station where they velcroed these tiny balls strategically on my body. These markers reflect the light in the motion capture studio, and these reflections allow the movement to be identified and processed by computers to capture the animations of my body. Whoa! <laughs> to the window! To the wall! But all I really cared about was getting on the court to play. Damn it. Damn it. Get your shoes. <laughs> you are ready. Woo! Thank you. Action. Action. Once I got into the gym, I was instructed to do a basic package of shots and dribble moves, similar to what the NBA guys go through when they come to mocap. After we finished all the skill work, I got to have a little fun with my signature walk and celebration. And since I was feeling and looking like the Pink Panther, I just had to do something cat related. By the end of my session, I was sweating like crazy and felt like I had gone through a true basketball drill session. Then along comes a seven footer to school me in the post. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Is this your first time in a suit? This is my first time in a suit. I feel like a big tennis ball. Can you teach me a cool post move? That's like something like your signature move. So right on this left block, mm -hmm. catch, observe, one dribble, jump hook. There you go. Ah! What is that, a $100 move, 10 cent finish? Is that what it's called? <laughs> no, million dollar move <laughs> with a five dollar finish. Okay, you're in the NBA, so maybe use different terms than what I used to use. <laughs> we don't know about millions. <laughs> so can I teach you a move now? Let's see what you got. Jab step here, jab step again, step here to a step back, okay. to a jump shot. See, I'm much better out in that area. So a jab. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So, where did you grow up? Uh, Pasadena. Oh, so you grew up in LA and then you ended up playing in LA. Yeah. That's awesome, and you were in LA last year. Yeah, two years, yeah. So how do you like Sacramento? I love it. Yeah? I like it. I like the people, the pace, slow motion, get away from everything, still, our flight from home, so That's I like cool. it. So when you were growing up, where was your favorite place to play? Were you like a park guy? Or did you like playing organized ball? Man, I, I played everywhere. I didn't play organized ball until my sophomore year in high school. Whoa. So we would play in the backyard, at the parks, at the high school. We hopped the fences, ride our bikes, like <laughs> all over the city. Like that's just all we did, just basketball, basketball, basketball. And you didn't play organized until sophomore year? Yeah, sophomore year. Did you have dreams of being in the NBA before your sophomore year? Yeah, I mean, I grew up as a kid. That was my dream, being in the NBA. I actually got cut. Freshman year, I was cut, and I always wanted to play, but I never had the opportunity to play organized. Yeah. There wasn't as much AU and all that. You know, mm -hmm. now you see a tall kid, you're like, you know, come play with me. We right. didn't have that, so you know, it was always a dream. So you know, once I made the team, I was like, I was locked in. 
That's awesome. I'm sure that there's, you know, a lot of kids who have started since they could walk playing ball, so that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So on an off day and no basketball day. No basketball what's day. What's going on? Uh, I'm at the house playing some games. Honestly. Yeah? Playing some games, watching some movies, playing some 2K. Yeah. Making sure my rating gets up. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite mode in 2K? Um, I like to play online. You just okay. learn about the competition online. Um, you want to be the best. And yeah. You, kind of the online players know they make you good. It's like they're going to show you a move or they're going to be doing something that's, mm -hmm. you know, hot in the game that, you know, helps you to be the best. That's cool. You want to be the best, you got to play the best. Yeah. You no, know, it's warfare. See, that's then when you go play your friends, you kill your friends because you're battle tested <laughs> online. So do your NBA friends, do they, um, do they play at all? Do you play against them? Yeah, yeah. Like who? Me and DC, we've got a little rivalry going. Uh, Jared okay. Dudley, you know, okay. playing with Jared Dudley and a, you know, a couple other guys. But uh, you know, 2K is a hot game. It's, and who's it's, the champ, though? Who's the champ? You know, the the best person I've seen is probably DC. DC is pretty good. He I came heard. by the office practicing before the game even came out. That's him. That sounds like him. That sounds like him. <laughs> so no I think that we should have you and DC to the office together. DC's going to be sick to his stomach when I beat him. When I figure this game out and I beat him and I talk with the makers and see the moves, all I need to know is how to make layups, post moves. That's all I need. Post moves, open jumpers. And anything else you kind of want to mention? I'm a simple guy. I love kids. And your aim. It's, a, it's a passion. I love what I'm doing. Um, for the kids out there, I was once that mm -hmm. nine or ten year old kid playing video games. And, you know, it's, it's just amazing seeing myself in the game. And today, I'm really, really in the game. One of the kids I work with, they go, Coach, I was playing with you in the game, and, and I had 50 points with you in the game, or something like that, you know? So you know, every time you get that, that's really cool. So one piece of advice for kids who may want to be in your shoes one day. Dream big, believe in yourself, stick with it. That's so. has already been out for an entire month, which hopefully means that you've had some time to jump into my career. And this week I have some information for you guys from someone who brought this mode to life. Hey guys, today I'm here with John and we are gonna be talking some inside information about my career. And I know you know a lot about that. I do. So let's, let's start by taking me back to 14 and what you decided to do to change it for this year's game? Well, 2K14 was more about just kind of the bigger world around an NBA player. And you kind of interacted with uh, multiple agents, you interacted with multiple business guys. Um, a lot of storylines that are kind of, I'll say, a little more further from the court, so to speak. For 15, we were more, you know, we really wanted to capture kind of the, the relationship between uh, your my player and, and your teammates and your coaches and assistant coaches and kind of really concentrate on that world. That's, that's kind of the, the main thrust is really just seeing how the inner kind of dynamics of an NBA team works. I think it's pretty cool because I feel like the majority of fans don't really know that side of the NBA. They just see the glitz and the glamour and oh, you get drafted, you make crazy amounts of money and then you play and it's all fun and dandy but I think it's really cool that you guys show that other side of it. Yeah we tried to kind of you know bring out the the stresses as far as you know player goes through when he's not you know the first pick overall. So I know that you guys brought in a lot of NBA guys to interact with the my career player. It was amazing I mean it was, it was really great to see them just kind of attached to the material. You know one of the guys we, we did you know, we had just completed the scene where it talks about being traded, and he just kind of had a moment. And we're like, you all right? He's like, no, it's cool. It's just that scene really kind of brought me back to that moment, you know, when I got traded and how, you know, stressful and just kind of how, you, you know, your world just gets turned upside down like that. So you've worked with a ton of NBA guys and Doc Rivers, who's like arguably one of the top coaches in the league. So 
Moving on in the future, who would be like a dream coach or player for you to work with in the my career setting? Being a 76er fan, I'd have to say Billy Cunningham. He'd be my guy, you know, take us back to the mid 80s, uh, the days of uh, Dr. J. But that's a great thing about the NBA. There's just so many stories over the past, you know, you know over the decades that, uh, yeah, there's so many to choose from. Will you give our viewers your one tip for being an awesome my career player? So for me, when I play, I play as a power forward. And the one thing I do is I set screens, set screens, set screens. Because I've found that, you know, at first when I was setting screens, I didn't, you know, get me the ball as I kind of rolled off my pick. But over time, they learn, you know, they fit, you know, the, the AI is there and you, you know, you get the screen outlet bad, so they start feeding you the ball after uh, after you set your pick. So that's that's kind of the little nugget I use and and how I kind of grow my player. So. so you guys heard that. If you're playing with a power forward, you better set good screens. And now for My Park. Last weekend in the My Park Championship, you guys broke all the records. With over 160,000 total games, it was a rival day to be remembered. Old Town once again pulled off the W, totaling over 56,000 wins. Sunset Beach came close to first place, but wasn't able to pull through in the end, while Rivet City unfortunately tasted defeat coming in last. So now the overall championship stands at Sunset Beach in first with five points, Old Town in second with four points, and Rivet City in third with three points. And shout out to The Truth Is Here 45 on PS4, totaling the most wins this weekend with 162 for Sunset Beach. And SD Baller 619 on Xbox One for totaling the most wins for Old Town with 135. And speaking of star players, there are almost 40 legend tier players in my park now. Along with the legends, NBA players are also starting to show up in the park, like Paul George and Andre Drummond. So keep your eye out, guys. You never know when you may go up against an NBA star. Let's keep the competition going for this week's rival day. So get up and ball out. Your community is counting on you. Now that it's the month of November and Thanksgiving is just around the corner, I want to know what you guys are thankful for. So for the next couple weeks, send in your videos telling us what you're thankful for to NBA2KTV at 2ksports.com or share on social media using the hashtag 2KTVThanks. I'll be checking Twitter, Instagram, Vine, and YouTube for the videos and we'll be showing off the videos at the end of the month. Thanks for watching the show guys make sure you stay tuned because we have a lot more tips and a lot more interviews coming up for you so I'll see you soon